Coding is one of the areas where AI is incredibly useful and most developers are now using tools like Cursor or Windsurf to code significantly faster. Now, I was asked recently uh, by an engineer at an organization with proprietary information whether it was safe to use these tools like Cursor or Windsurf from a data standpoint. And it just made me think because I show myself using tools like Cursor on these videos and I, I don't think I fully appreciated some of the risks that there are around data and I want to take this chance to go through some of those in this video. It's going to be a short video. I want to show you a demo about the risks of the risks to your environment variables, which you can think of as passwords if you're not a coder, getting disclosed. I'll show you some quick examples of how that can happen. I'll talk then about one of the risks with using agents, which is that they're not sandbox and they can access anything on your machine. Then I'll talk about uh, tool calls. This is where you connect the language model up to tools that can read and write files, for example, uh, often called an agent. And last of all, uh, I'll talk about a little bit more obscure as, as a risk, but hidden malicious instructions, either through web search, things you might find on the web, or malicious code that might be in repositories that you try and run, and why that's a particular issue now using tools like Cursor and Windsurf. After that, uh, I'll talk through some Cursor-specific notes and some Windsurf-specific notes. And last of all, I'll give my recommendations. Okay, so I'm here in Cursor. I'm on the latest version. It's version 48. And I've created a test repository with a few files. So I have just created a readme. But one of the files here, I won't open it, it's called .env, and it's got some environment variables, some API keys that I've put in as dummy values. And what I'm going to do is ask the chat here, this is the agent, whether it can tell me what the value of these variables is. Now, for it to tell me that, it means that the content of that file must have been available to the LLM. And if it was available to the LLM, it means the content of that file was sent up in a request to Cursor and then across to Claude in this case, um, it's actually being sent to, well, it's been auto-selected, but it's probably being sent to an Anthropic model. So basically that information is going up to Cursor and then across to Anthropic, and then it's coming back in the response. So broadly speaking, there are two ways data can be transferred up to Cursor or to Windsurf. The first is included as context. That means just included within the prompt. This happens if your windows are open or if your files are not included in Cursor Ignore or Codium Ignore. But the second way that you can have information go up is because all of your code base is typically going to be indexed. It's going to be organized for quick search. And that means chunks are sent up in order for the embeddings to be calculated. That's done remotely on Cursor and remotely on Windsurf. Although on Windsurf, they're then stored back locally. It's just the calculation is done remotely. So let's see if we can get the secret token. I'm just going to say, oops, I am. Um, want to cross check the value of secret token. Can you read that for me from the .env file? So here, uh, let's see if it, it's using the agent, it's reading the file. Okay, and it's given me the value of the super secret token. So this is problem number one. If you just initialize a repository and you put some environment variables into the .env file, it's going to be able to find them and it's going to be able to send those up to cursor and send them across. Now, those are all encrypted, but it's just generally very bad practice for it to be possible for anything in your environment variables file to even be sent. Now, one of the paths uh, that's to fix this is to introduce what's called a cursor ignore file. So I'm going to create a cursor ignore and actually it's a dot cursor ignore file. So here I need to touch cursor ignore. And now in here, I'm going to include the .env file. So I'm going to exclude it. And notice that, by the way, the system still had access to .env, even though it was included in git ignore. Now that doesn't happen with Windsurf. I'll go through that a bit later. But it does happen uh, with Cursor. Now, Cursor has developed the, the Cursor ignore file so that if I include .env, it should now uh, not have access uh, to my .env file. So let's take a copy of this message and start a new chat. And let's ask again, this time with the cursor ignore file saying we should explicitly ignore .env, which means it should not be included in indexing uh, when cursor is basically developing a structure for this repo so it can quickly search. 
but it also should not be included in any requests. So we'll see what happens here. And again, it's able to read it. So this is this is very surprising, but even when I follow the instructions to use the cursor ignore file, it's able to access the .env, and this is clearly quite insecure. Now, the reason this seems to happen is if I quit, and then if I reopen cursor, so I've reopened the exact same file, now you can see that the .env, uh, the AI features are disabled. So if I now ask that same request, it's going to try and read it, but it's not able to find the .env in the workspace. So it seems like you can get some security, but you need not just to create a cursor ignore file, but you also need to restart your terminal um, after there are any changes to your cursor ignore file. So this definitely allows for quite a few paths whereby um, you could be exposing your environment variables as they're leaving to go out to an LLM request. The second thing I'll show you here is around uh, the issue with folder structures. So what I've done is I've created this internal folder within this security folder. And I want to show you how I can open up this internal folder in Cursor. And within that internal folder, I'm going to ask um, if it can read my .env file. And I'm going to say, could you, um, I'll just say, I think it's in the parent folder of this repo. So let's click Send. And actually, and it's going to search, and it's still searching here. So you can see now it's actually asking me to call a tool. So I am able to visually review this. And it's finally now checking the parent directory. And it's now uh, been able to expose the secret token. So actually what's happening in this case is, well, there are two security concerns. One is that even though I'm in this folder here, which is internal, I'm still able to access stuff that's outside of that folder. So this is an example of where there is no sandboxing. Basically, the agent is free to roam. And to some degree, this is a feature because it gives it a lot of access. But it's also quite insecure because it can access pretty much anything on my computer. And second of all, even if the .env is blocked somehow via a cursor ignore file, it's still able to get it via the agent's tools because the agent has the ability to read and write specific files. So now I'm in Windsurf, and I'm going to run a test uh, in similar vein. So I'll just create uh, a .env file here. And I'll also create a .git ignore. And I'll also create um, a codium ignore. So codium ignore. And within the .env, I'll just put in secret key equals, uh, let's just make that equal to something a bit more random so that the computer doesn't guess. And now I'm going to ask here, well, first I'm going to include in git ignore uh, dot env and the same in codium ignore dot env. And I'm going to close my dot env window. And I'm going to ask a question here to say, um, I want to cross check the value of secret in my v. Can you read it out? And in this case here, codium is actually doing a good job. So it seems to be recognizing straight away that it's in my git ignore. Uh, so that's a good thing. I'm going to delete the git ignore just to see if uh, that manages to bypass it. So I've deleted git ignore. OK, and it's finding it's in my codium ignore. So this is actually um, a bit more um, reassuring that even though I've just created and without having to restart Windsurf, it's not able to find the value of my environment variable. Now, I would say if you open up the window like I just did here, and if you now send a request, um, now what's the value of secret key? Yeah, even in this case, it's not going through, although I believe if you have a window open, you are at risk of the context of this window being included in the chat, and that potentially could expose your API key. So I've shown here two of the key risks. One is around environment variables. With Cursor, there seems to be a particular risk that unless you restart Cursor, it will ignore the fact that you have tried to ignore a certain file from being sent up. This does not seem to be as much of an issue with, Win, with Windsurf. Agent sandboxing, um, there does seem to be an issue whereby you have access to pretty much any file on the computer, and there's no way to limit its scope to a given folder. So that does pose a risk. Now, there's some other risks I'll just briefly mention here. 
One is the risk of automated tool calls. You can see within cursor that as it tries to answer my question, it's taking various actions and it's using tools to, for, for example, uh, determine what's within certain repositories and what's within certain file structures. And when it runs these commands, these are pretty benign. They're just listing out the content of what's in the folders, but potentially there could be a command that deletes some files. And if you have set up cursor or windsurf to automatically accept whatever tool calls that the tool that the agent wishes to make, you're definitely at risk of files becoming deleted or scripts you don't want to run being run. Um, that's called YOLO mode when you have it just accepting everything. And it can definitely be fun if you're doing it. I recommend doing it on a separate computer on a, on a rented temporary CPU. Uh, but if you do it on your own computer, you're putting your file system at risk and you're also putting any data it's exposed. It could get exposed to at risk as well. And the last thing I'll mention is around hidden malicious instructions. This one here is hopefully pretty rare, but it's still worth keeping in mind. And the way it happens is if you web search and these uh, tools like Windsurf have got web search built in, if Windsurf decides to do a search and it happens to find a website, that website could have some text that tells the LLM to write some code that is going to expose or send some of your information on your computer to some unknown or malicious address. Likewise, if you copy some kind of repository from GitHub that's not trusted, if you open up that repository, it's possible it could have some code that is instructing the LLM to do malicious things, or it could also have some scripts that get executed when you open up the repository that lead you to uh, having executed code that maybe does damage on your computer or takes information away. So a few um, specific points here on Cursor and Windsurf. First of all, I'll show you the Cursor document here on Ignore Files. Cursor Ignore, this is what we used. It says, makes a best effort attempt to exclude files from both AI features and indexing. Indexing is because Cursor and Windsurf, they'll develop a version of your code base that is neatly organized and also embedded so it can do quick searches using vectors. And depending on your settings, it may or may not store any content from your repo. But if you've set it to the most privacy enhancing settings, it will only be generating the embeddings and sending those back for local storage with Windsurf. Um, whereas I think with Cursor, it does store some of those embeddings remotely, which should be fairly anonymized, although embeddings can be reversed in some cases. But the thing that surprised me is that this cursor ignore file is only a best effort attempt. Um, I just showed you one example of where it's not respected if you don't restart your terminal. And this is kind of surprising because security of ENV file, ENV variables is usually top priority and not something that um, typical apps would take only a best effort attempt at doing. If you look further here, you can see in cursor's security that cursor ignore can prevent files being indexed but they're considering adding a cursor ban file. Presumably that would be a stricter version of it that provides uh, better security or rather more strong guarantees. Again, it's surprising to me that the guarantees are not stronger already on the cursor ignore file. Windsurf also have their security documentation. They clarify here that files and subdirectories specified in git ignore or codium ignore are ignored both by the embedding service. This is which organizes your repo for quick search, um, but also it should ignore any of those files and not put them into context for any of your general queries. So if you're using cursor, there are two uh, steps I recommend. The first is to enable a uh, privacy mode. If you go to cursor, then go to settings here and you go to cursor settings, you can then uh, search for privacy mode and make sure this is enabled. I think by default, it may be off. And in the second case, uh, I recommend enabling workspace trust. What does this do? Well, if you go up to cursor and you check for uh, VS code settings, actually, you can search for trust up here. You'll be able to scroll down and see security, then workspace and trust. And you want to have this enabled by default, it's off in cursor. But what this does is anytime you open a new folder system, it just gives you a prompt um, before it proceeds to open that. So you have the opportunity to then realize maybe this has got malicious code or maybe the name of the folder I'm opening or the repo I'm opening doesn't match exactly what I expected. Uh, so this is off by default. I'd recommend turning it on and it will just force this prompt that gives you a moment of reflection before you open a code space to just double check the name is what you expect. Okay, so for Windsurf, 
something that's kind of crazy is if you search for zero data in the windsurf settings or in uh, the settings themselves you're not going to find anything and it seems like this feature has actually been renamed even though it's still live in the documentation and the way to turn on what i think is zero data is to go to your settings page so windsurf.com forward slash settings you need to be logged in and then click on disable code snippet telemetry um so on the individual plan it says to opt out from this um yeah you need to click it otherwise it'll be disabled for team or enterprise plans and then click save so yeah turns out i didn't even have that privacy setting turned on and it was not particularly easy to find so to sum up if you're a developer or organization definitely some care is warranted um, around using cursor or windsurf try and enable zero privacy mode or zero data retention use test api keys if you can or rotate your keys after every coding session because there's there are many pathways through which they could end up going up uh, to cursor or to windsurf don't deploy live live app using cursor windsurf so if you code it up rotate your keys then restart using vs code or something and push it then so that your API keys don't get exposed, the new ones. Require permission on every tool call, unless you're going YOLO mode, in which case it's probably best to do it on a separate instance that doesn't have access to sensitive data or services. And then try and read about Cursor and Windsurf security. Yeah, and read up on the security implications. I've prepared this deep search, deep research on Cursor, which you can go through, I'll link it. And I've prepared a deep search here on, uh, on Windsurf as well. And then my recommendations or thoughts for Windsurf and Cursor are, first of all, to allow agent sandboxing within specific folders. So the agent can only access specific folders and cannot access specific files that you exclude. This should be true for the agent. So should be true for agent, well, possible for agent and for context. Second of all, um, yeah, I guess this is a related note. There, There should be no way to access certain files. So if Cursor are planning on Cursor ban, they should go ahead and do that as soon as possible. I think having an approach where it's a best best effort attempt is not good enough in terms of security approach when there are a ton of developers that are going to be having .env files and risks of their variables being exposed. And then last of all, uh, potentially allow for a local only option where a small language model can be run on your computer and do the embeddings locally as well so that there is an option to have everything staying if you do want to have a more secure approach to this. So that folks is it for this video on cursor and windsurf security. Uh, let me know, I've put links below in the comments in the description rather, but let me know if you've any comments on other issues you've come across or recommendations on either tools or just better ways to make use of cursor or windsurf. I am a huge fan of the tools myself. They're incredible in terms of the speed up I get, but probably I'm being a bit naive on some of the security concerns.